Hey, greetings, everyone. Glenn Kelloway from the basement back with uh, my third uh, installment of Ranking the 60s. This is 1967. Um, wow, what a year. I've got to tell you a little bit about myself in 1967 because it was pretty much a life-changing year for me. Um, I was 14 years old, graduated from public school, grade 8, in June of that year, Summer of Love, um, Sergeant Pepper, just coming out, uh, just at the right age, man, to be um, led astray, let's put it that way. So, um, I vividly remember a couple of weeks after graduation, maybe even a week after graduation, um, the high school that I went to uh, was probably a 10-minute walk from my house. And uh, behind, the ho- behind the high school was a park. And everybody used to hang out at the park. So a couple of buddies and I went to the park one summer afternoon, probably late June, early July. And there was a couple of guys there, three or four of them, they were... Um, a couple of years older than us and um, had already gotten into the uh, hippie thing. They had the hair and they were wearing, uh, you know, cool clothes and stuff. And we were just kind of wannabes hoping to be them. <laughs> and uh, they called us over and uh, smoked us up. That was my first experience with marijuana. Um, never looked back <laughs> after that. But... Um, what was really strange about that is the place we were sitting and we're smoking up and getting high and I look over and my public school teachers are having their picnic like a hundred yards away from where we were smoking pot. I don't know. I don't know. I never, I never looked over. I, I didn't know. There was no eye contact, so I don't know what happened there or they just shook their heads or what. But anyway, funny story. And, um, yeah, so from then on, man, the San Francisco scene, the whole psychedelic thing, Sergeant Pepper, I mean, what a year, really. It was a phenomenal year in my life, one of the, one of the happiest, best years of my personal life. It was a lot of fun. So let's count down 20 albums that I picked for this year. Could have picked hundreds, so I'm sure I'm missing some of your favorites but these are mine. So uh, at the time, these were more of a singles band to me. I never bought these albums uh, until later and realized how good the whole the albums were. But the Young Rascals grooving. I mean, they just had some great songs on the radio, and uh, this is a fantastic album. If you if you're like me, uh, who are a, a young Glenn, thinking that this is just a singles band, you are wrong. A lot of great deep tracks on these albums. The Young Rascals Groovin', great album from 1967. Next, number 19, I'm going with the Kinks. Now, that's another band that I just was really into the hits. I didn't buy Kinks albums for quite some time, but I loved uh, I loved every song, man, that they had on the radio. It was great, but something else by the Kinks came out in 1967. I mean, just a phenomenal album. Uh, this is a reissue, but uh, my favorite Kink song is on this album, Waterloo Sunset. So, Next, number 18. Huge Jefferson Airplane fan, and I'm going to sneeze. I know it. You're going to have to watch. Here it comes. <coughs> I'm back. <laughs> you know, I was at Larry's house yesterday, and he's editing. A, we did a great review on Sean Lennon's amazing new album. <laughs> watch it if you haven't seen it, and listen to the album. It's really good. But uh, I'm watching him edit our video, and, and, and he's like a professional sitting there doing that, and uh, I leave the sneezes in. Opposites, polar opposites. Anyway, Jefferson Airplane. Released two albums that year. 
first one will show up a little later. It's just a, one of my favorite albums of all time. And then they release this gem, After Bathing at Baxter's. Now, After Bathing at Baxter's, the title, um, Bathing at Baxter's to them meant uh, taking LSD. So they uh, would come into the studio and to record something. And uh, band members say, hey, what would you do last night? I was bathing at Baxter's. And they all knew what that meant. It was an inside joke. They uh, called this album after bathing at Baxter's, and it is very uh, weird, psychedelic. Took me a long time to get into it, but I absolutely love this record. Uh, this is a reissue on Sundays. Uh, I think Jefferson Airplane are one of the great bands of all time. Next, one of the great songs of all time comes out in 1967, Proko Harem's A Whiter Shade of Pale. What an incredible song that is. This is their first album, which I do not own on vinyl. Um, I'm trying to see if they have the original cover here. Yes. So there's the original cover. Now, the original album came out without Whiter Shade of Pale on it, and I believe they reissued it quite quickly with uh, that track included. You can correct me if I'm wrong here. I have a uh, deluxe CD version of the album with the pink cover, and they have included Whiter Shade of Pale as a bonus track on here. So um, if anybody has more details on that, let me know. Um, I could be wrong, could be right. I, anyway, great album. Next on the list, The Doors. Two great albums in 1967. Um, did I put that down? No, okay. So, uh, Strange Days. In some ways, this is my favorite Doors album because I love when the music's over. It's a great song. In Strange Days, the opening. Um, uh, did they have People Are Strange is on here. Um, both those albums are so good. The other one will show up on my list here at some point, but Strange Days, great album. Next, Leonard Cohen, who will figure prominently in a story I might tell when we get to 1969. But his first album came out, Songs of Leonard Cohen. I mean, it's so funny at the time, like music, you know, um, wasn't as so well defined as it is now. Like everything's in a box and I only, you know, pop four. There, there's this kind of music and that kind of music and never are they mixed. But in those days, everything was together. Like, uh, you know, you, if you listen to the radio, you heard Frank Sinatra uh and then you heard the beatles like it was really crazy but anyway um songs uh, of leonard cohen what an amazing album the song suzanne comes out and it's fantastic sisters of mercy so long marianne um hey that's no way to say goodbye this is a great debut from an incredible incredible songwriter leonard cohen next i love this band when they came out their cover of a Supreme song was just epic, and that is Vanilla Fudge. And talk about a psychedelic kind of cool cover. This was a great frickin' album at the time on the Atco label. Um, you Keep Me Hanging On was the song. There was a short version of it on the radio, and then the extended version, which is 7 minutes and 20 seconds long on here. They also do a couple of Beatles tracks on here, Eleanor Rigby, which is eight minutes long, and uh, Ticket to Ride. They do the Curtis Mayfield's People Get Ready, uh, The Zombie, She's Not There, and uh, Sonny Bono, Sonny and Cher's Bang Bang. I mean, talk about a lot of covers turned into, like, heavy psychedelic rock songs. I mean, just a really cool record at the time. Vanilla Fudge. Next on my list... The Stones. Beatles put out Sgt. Pepper. The Stones got to follow it up with us. Their psychedelic version of their Satanic Majesty's Request. I wish I had this on vinyl with that weird lenticular cover. I used to have it. I don't have it now. I am lo always looking for a copy, but I do not want to pay $75 for it. So, And I know there's a reissue, but they shrunk the, uh, the lenticular, I'm saying that word right, cover down a bit. And uh, this had the Beatles hidden 
in the picture. I don't know if you guys were aware of that, but um, I really like this album. It's one of my favorite Stones albums. A lot of people pan it, but uh, Sing This All Together in Another Land, 2000 Man, uh, She's a Rainbow's on here, uh, 2000 Light Years from Home. Uh, I think this is a great record, great psychedelic record from the Stones. Next, okay, we're going with The Doors' debut. Man, this album was just, they were just so different. Light My Fire comes out again. It was a three-minute song on the radio and a seven-minute song on the album, The End, which was just mind-blowing when you hear those, you know, Mother, I Want To. I mean, it was pretty deep stuff and uh, very eerie with the organ and just, just different and uh, so good, so good, The Doors. Where am I now? Let's do a count back. Hold on a second. I think I got 11 albums to go. Number 11. This could be... In, the, the next 11 are just all... Could be number ones. Really, they could. Um, the debut from Pink Floyd. Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Boy, was this a mind-blowing album in 1967. That's It was just so different from everything else. Um, as soon as I heard that first track, uh, Astronomy Domain... Um, just blew me away. What a great record this is. Pink Floyd's Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Next, number 10. Now we're in the top 10. Like I said earlier, I became a huge fan of that uh, whole San Francisco scene, but the Grateful Dead were not the, one of the bands that I was paying attention to at the time, although now I'm a huge Dead guy. Um, it was Jefferson Airplane and Country Joe and the Fish. This is a fantastic album, electric music for the mind and body, some great blues on here, some great rock, some great psychedelic stuff, really good album. I mean, everybody's kind of familiar with the um, Feel Like I'm Fixing to Die and the Fish Cheer and everything that they did at Woodstock, but that album was much more, they kind of started out as a jug band, and that was that's kind of more in that folky jug band reason, but this is an electric album and phenomenal record, it's so good. Number nine, or uh, I'm going with Jimmy, released two albums this year. It's funny, like I always just go by memory. I, I don't research too much, but um, sometimes I second guess myself because I, uh, I was looking up lists of albums that came out in 67, and this album, Axis Boldest Love, is written as 67, and I always think of it as 68. Now, the reason I discovered is why I'm doing that is because it came out in December of 67. That's when uh, things start to get shady. Um, you think, okay, well, I was listening to it in 68, so I could have bought it in January of 68 or something, but, man, a phenomenal follow-up album from uh, Jimmy. This is amazing, amazing album. Um, Up From the Skies, Little Wing. Uh, oh, man, what else is on this record? Uh, if Six Was Nine... Uh, Castles Made of Sand, Axe, the song Axis Bold as Love is great, um, Ma Spanish Castle Magic, Wait Until Tomorrow, oh man, just a great album from Jimmy, it, it, the first three Hendrix albums, I think I switch day to day which ones are my favorite, I always say Electric Ladyland, but then I listen to this and go, this is the best. Okay, next, Cream. Disraeli Gears, one of my favorite album covers of all time. What a great album. And these guys were mind-blowing in 67. Sunshine of Your Love, Tales of Brave Ulysses, Swablar, uh, Take It Back, Strange Brew. It's a freaking phenomenal record. Phenomenal. Excellent, excellent, excellent album. It was one of my... Burned the heck out of it. Bob Dylan, so we get... Uh, in 65 and 66, we get Bringing It All Back Home, we get... Um, Highway 61, we get Blonde on Blonde, then Bob kind of disappears for a bit and comes back with John Wesley Harding. Totally just a, a complete about face, complete rock or uh, folky country album. Um, great songs on here. Uh, All on the Watchtowers on here. 
Um, the Ballad of Frankie Lee and Judas Priest is on here. This just, oh man, I love this record. I love it. Great record. We are down to the top six. Number six, Monkeys Headquarters. Yes, I was still a Monkeys fan. 1967, April 2nd, I saw the Monkeys at Maple Leaf Gardens. Um, Headquarters is my favorite Monkeys album. This is the album they actually wrote the songs and performed them themselves. It's a great frickin' record. Uh, for those of you who aren't Monkeys fans, you, this is, how can you not like this record? Uh, Sunny Girlfriends on here. Uh, Randy Scouse Git is on here. Uh, you Told Me is on here. Uh, you Just May Be the One, one of my favorite songs. Um, Shades of Grey, Can't Get Her Off of My Mind, the Davy Jones track. Um, excellent, excellent record. Love that album. Okay, top five. This is the one that I, I'd heard Freak Out, but this is the one that did it for me. Absolutely free. As soon as I heard Brown Shoes Don't Make It, I was hooked. One of Zappa's best albums as far as I'm concerned. Probably his most important album for me as a fan. Uh, to get me uh, involved with him. The following year, I would see Frank and the Original Mothers. Uh, next, top four. Man, this is tough. Beatles, Magical Mystery Tour. This is an album, another album where I think. Well, uh, no, I guess I, I, I'm okay with this because I remember getting it for Christmas and, uh, and all my friends coming over and listening with me uh, going, I'm on the phone going, I got Magical Mystery Tour and uh, coming over and spending the afternoon spinning this great frickin' record. Um, enough said. I, I don't need to talk about it. We all know Magical Mystery Tour. Next, number three, the Hendrix debut album, Jimi Hendrix Experience. Man, this is incredible. So... 1967, I am in high school, grade 9. One of the guys in my class, his name is Steve Pilling. His brothers, Ed and Brian Pilling, uh, ended up in a band, a Toronto band, that, that had a few hit records called Flood. Um, they had a song called Cousin Mary, you might be aware of. Turn 21 was a hit. Um, there was a couple of them. Anyway, Ed and Brian took off for England in uh, probably 66 and to kind of start their music careers over there and they ended up befriending um cat stevens robert plant the people he met when they were just they were just starting up um anyway they came home with some records and one of the records they came home with was a 45 of jimmy hendrix experience hey joe now um steve brought the record into our class, and our teacher let him bring a little, tur little one of those little suitcase record players in to play the song for us. And uh, it was mind-blowing. I mean, this is before the album, this album hit in the U.S. So I'd had a sneak preview of Jimi Hendrix's experience. And, uh, I mean, what can you say about this album? It's just incredible. Incredible. Number two, I said Jefferson Airplane. This album just was... Uh, hit me at the right time, sent me on a whole journey through that whole San Francisco scene. And uh, this is not really a psychedelic album. It's folky. Um, it does have two hit records, uh, two hit songs on it, Somebody to Love and uh, White Rabbit. But there's a lot of acoustic stuff on here. Yorma Conan doing a great uh, instrumental called Embryonic Journey. Um, Fantastic record. One of my all-time favorite albums. Number two. And number one, if you hadn't guessed, I'm wearing the hat. Sgt. Pepper, Lonely Hearts Club Band. The greatest album ever made. Ever, number one, forever and ever. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. When this album came out, it just blew everything apart. I got to tell you, if you weren't there, you have no idea how important this album was when it came out. It was played everywhere. I even had a friend um, years later I met who 
was uh, in Vietnam. And when I met him, he was up in northern uh, Alberta, Canada. Um, he went up there uh, to study um, uh, indigenous people or something like that and ended up meeting his wife out, up there who was an indigenous woman and stayed. Anyway, we used to have these long chats and he'd tell me about his time in the war and he said Sergeant Pepper would get played on a record player there and that um, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, there was some, uh, it was almost like a religious thing for local people in Vietnam or something, something to do with the stars and the way they took to that song. It was really kind of a cool story. But anyway, this album uh, was uh, a game changer in terms of production, in terms of songwriting, in terms of putting lyrics on albums, and just everything. I mean, just phenomenal. So that's my uh, journey through 1967. We'll wait a couple more days and I'll do 1968. And uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching this. Uh, it seems to be getting some traction, so I really appreciate that. And we will talk soon. Take care.